Hey everybody, um, so I just wanted to do a quick video on unit testing in LabVIEW. Um, so uh, for those who may or may not be familiar with the term unit testing, essentially this is a way that you can create code that will test your code. Um, so that way um, you can validate your code simply um, and quickly and repeatably, right? So if I, uh, you know, write a whole bunch of tests for my code and I make sure all my tests pass, and then, you know, a few months later, I need to make an update to my code. Um, I can rerun those same tests after I've made my update and make sure that when I was changing stuff, I didn't break anything previously. Um, so it's a good way to prove, A, that your code works like it's supposed to, um, but also, uh, yeah, a good just check, right? Um, and there's a whole bunch of different, you know, philosophies and methodologies behind unit testing. Um, I think kind of in the, the LabVIEW world, um, Sam Taggart, um, he's really kind of championed, I feel like, a lot of that stuff. Um, and he has some really, really good content um, on this topic. So if you're interested in learning more about uh, uh, unit testing and you know test-driven uh, test development in general, um, he's an awesome resource. He has a lot of videos on YouTube, um, on his website. Um, he's also got all sorts of blog posts and stuff about it as well. And I'm pretty sure he's reviewed just about every way you can unit test code in LabVIEW, all the different tools that are out there. Um, so yeah, really good resource. Um, he's, I would say, one of the gurus of this. Um, so yeah, definitely check him out. Um, and then if you need help with unit testing too, I know he also... Uh, uh, does you know consulting so you know if you needed help figuring some of this stuff out he's there as well um, yeah um, so like I mentioned there's a whole bunch of different tools in LabVIEW for unit testing um, there's not necessarily a right or wrong with any of the tools um, you know a lot of its preference um, so yeah I would find the one you like and that you feel like fits best into your workflows and makes sense to you and I would stick with that um, but, and there's pros and cons to all of them. Um, but for this video, and I was gonna do future videos as well on the other tools, I wanted to start with this uh, Karaya unit test framework, which is from JKI. Um, the reason I chose this one is I feel like if you've never done unit testing before, this is the easiest one to figure out. Um, setting up the test is really simple, um, it, you know, and it's pretty straightforward. Um, there are also um, a few other tools out there. So VI Tester is another one. Oops. Oh, sorry. I have it set to uh, install. That's why nothing's coming up. Um, so yeah, there's uh, this uh, VI Tester from JKI Labs. This one works great. I'll do a separate video on this one um, as well. Um, also by JKI, like the one I'm demoing here. Um, yeah, this is another option that's really used out there. Um, LUnit is another one um, here. Um, and the way that this one works is actually very similar to how VI Tester works as well. Um, there are obviously are differences, but um, just the general workflow of setting up unit tests is, is similar to me. Um, so yeah, LUnit is another one. Um, there also is one uh, that she kind of, that. And I has made, I believe it's called the unit test toolkit, um, which is kind of cool. But yeah, I'll do a video on all of these in the future so you can compare and kind of see the differences. But also, like I said, I'm pretty sure Sam Taggart has reviewed all of these um, and he's much better at this than I am. So uh, you definitely can check out his stuff and, um, you know, if you're uh, trying to uh, decide what to do. But yeah, like I said, I think Karaya is the simplest unit test toolkit. Um, the reason that it makes it so simple is all the other ones, you know, you're usually creating classes to define your tests and, you know, um, you know, you'll create, um, yeah, there's, there's some scripting and whatnot into it, right? Like if you use VI tester um, and I want to create a test, um, there's some kind of scripting that'll kind of get you kind of where you need to go and it will generate like a template VI, but then you need to like override the template VI with other VIs and um, it's just, it's not hard, but it is slightly more, there's just a little bit more to learn. It's, yeah, like I said, it's not hard, but there's a little bit more to learn. Karaya is super simple and that I'm basically just creating a test and then def adding assertions to that. 
So for example, I can drop this define test function here and I need to just give it a name. So I'm just going to call it demo tests. Um, and from there, I have just a whole list of assertions. So I'm going to drop this down. And you can see I have, you know, a true false assertion, a bunch of different compare assertions, um, and also errors. So for example, let's just start with true. So um, it's going to, it's looking for me to pass in a true. Um, so right here where it says true, if I pass in a true, this will be a passing test. If I pass in a false, it will be a failing test. So I can drop this assertion in and then I can put my code that I'm unit testing before it. And then basically the output of that can get fed into there and it'll just capture everything and um, build my unit test for me. So I'm just going to drop a sequence structure here real quick so I can just define a few tests. Um, and I want to make sure that that runs first. So let's um, run both of these. And on the top, it asks for a label. So this is important. We will want to define each test. So you can kind of label that however you want. Um, so I can call this something like expecting, you know, uh, you know, maybe yeah, demo.vi, not that I actually have a VI there, I'm just gonna leave the constant. Um, but let's say I was unit testing a VI that I dropped in there um, to out, whoops, output true. Um, and I can, yeah, add another case, you know, whoops, I'm just struggling right now. Um, yeah, let's delete that I, and, oh, that's where my I went, I guess. And we'll call this one demo two, all right? So, yeah, just creating labels so I know what the tests are. So, um, that way, uh, you know, when I, and I'll show you, it'll pop up a little GUI so I can see what passed and what failed and whatnot. Um, so this helps me identify what I'm testing. And also, I think it's helpful to include what you're expecting there so you know, um, you know, in this case, it's just true false, which is kind of obvious. But if I were to create an assertion with a comparison, um, there's stuff like, you know, be greater than, be less than, or like almost equal, right? Or be the same value or the same type or, you know, stuff like that. So um, it can get a little bit more com uh, complicated than just like a true false. Or, I mean, the error ones I feel like are pretty straightforward, right? Either you're expecting a function to error or you're expecting a function not to error. So, you know, depending on the, the test you're running, then, you know, I think it's helpful too to plan for both, right? If there's a scenario which you know should cause an error, I think it's good to create a test to show that you are actually generating the error when you expect to. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah, let's say, um, yeah, let's say, you know, expecting value to be greater than, I don't know, uh, 0 0.7. And connect that. Um, and you can see there it wants a variant. So it's asking to actually wire in that value. So um, let's just do random number and pass that in. Um, so yeah, I've defined three tests now. It's really pretty quick, right? I just dropped my assertions. Um, and then right here I'm adding, you know, constants and whatnot, but instead you would just be leveraging uh, your VIs, right? And it may fundamentally change the way you write your code to some degree. Um, you know, not everything is always super easy to unit test. So when you're thinking of unit testing, it might even kind of change the way that you're programming as you start to think about, well, how easy will this be to test? So um, can kind of fundamentally change, um, and it, it's a good change, right? Helps make your code more modular, um, less coupled, right? You know, if your VI pulls in a whole bunch of different notifiers and queues and global variables and who knows what else, um, well, to test that now, I need all of those things to exist, right? So I have to create it, which you can do, right? I can create a whole bunch of startup code that generates all of that stuff and puts it in a certain state. Um, but yeah, so 
it is possible, but um, yeah, creating more modular code, less coupled code definitely helps in that I can create um, my test much easier. Um, so yeah, I can create all these assertions and that's actually all that I need to do to run my test. So, so I actually wired this guy in wrong. Sorry, let me fix that. So yeah, let's uh, say we said we wanted it to be greater than 0 0.7. So let's set this to a value of 0 0.7. So, and there is one other thing I wanted to show. There is this register with caller test. So what this allows you to do is you can create like my, you know, kind of main test. And then in that I can create sub VIs that wrap other tests. And in my report, it actually is going to generate like a tree hierarchy that shows, you know, uh, you know, it'll group everything and, and it's children and on and on and on down. So I can create like a, Hey, you know, maybe a test for my whole project. And then in each there, in that test, I can create kind of subgroups that are like maybe specific modules or specific components. And then it, kind of below all of those, I can create additional tests for each you know specific VI that I'm testing and whatnot. So you can get really fancy um, if you want to do that. Yeah, you just need to make sure you check that uh, register with caller so that you know the sub VI will basically register with the VI that was calling it, and you'll get all of that info in your reports. Um, and then there is uh, this error code, and it also tracks execution time. So it's going to say, how long did this take to execute, which can be useful for like benchmarking. Um, and yeah, so let's run this. Um, and we got this error, and we got that error. So um, we can see we get this little pop-up that shows, um, well, we failed our demo test test. Right, we were expecting demo vi to output true, and it didn't. We were also expecting the value to be greater than 0 0.7, and it was not. Although our demo two was true, and one really cool thing with this is I can click that, and it will show me exactly where in the code that was. Which you know, for this example, it's not really all that helpful. But when you're testing a very large scale thing that maybe has vi's that call, you know. VIs and you have things layers and layers down. Um, yeah, being able to just click this and boom, it takes you right to it can be really helpful. So I can say, hey, either A, is my test setup wrong? Or yeah, should I, you know, maybe look at that? So let's change this. Um, and yeah, actually, I'm going to also check this assert only. Um, so if you noticed, uh, I have automatic error handling enabled on this, which I shouldn't. I just, sorry, it's a new machine, so it's enabled. <laughs> um, but that's why it popped up those error messages um, because these functions actually generated an error when I failed the test. If I set it to assert only, it will just let me know whether it passed or failed and not generate an error. So um, let's uh, look at some of this stuff. So if you notice, if I go to action, there is a rerun all test. I can click that and boom. Um, whoops, what happened? What's, what is going on? Oh, sorry. So assert only is messing it up. Sorry, I actually had that backwards. The assert only is passing out the error. Um, so yeah, let's run this. And we're off to the races. So ignore the automatic error handling. Um, but yeah, so now this test that was failing is passing. Um, and yeah, I can run this, you know, over and over and over again. Um, obviously, my one is generating a random number. So, um, you know, not a repeatable test by any means, but let's force it to pass. So I'm going to say greater than negative one. Um, so let's rerun this and you can see now I get a pass because all of my tests passed. So I can go here, I can rerun my tests um, over and over again. I can adjust things till I get it how I want. Um, and the cool thing is I can just save this as a VI. So now I have like a test VI and I can have as many of those as I want. Um, and then as I update my code, 
I can just rerun this and make sure I didn't break anything. And I can add new tests for things, new things that I need to test. Um, another cool thing you can do is you can export the test results. So it supports just like a text file, but it also can do like a JUnit XML report. Um, and if you go to report here, you can see what that text file looks like. Uh, basically, you have your top level. This is the test that I ran. And then these are the specific tests and the messages that they output and whether they passed or failed. So um, yeah, it can be really useful in kind of just simple unit testing. It, in my opinion, it's the easiest to just get up and running with. It, there's really no learning curve, right? You're, you're just creating a VI, defining a test, and then adding all of your assertions. So you definitely can get fancier. So there are a whole bunch of different uh, you know, you can create test suites that will generate, you know, kind of custom reports. You can create your own custom runners. Um, there's a command line interface you can use to um, execute these tests over the command line. If you're using like a, maybe like a GitLab runner or something to do automated tests. Um, and they have, you know, some pretty good examples. Um, so, yeah, there's a... Whoop, you know, for example... And this actually highlights, um, they created sub VIs for their tests. So they created this uh, you know, test that's called test integer dictionary. And then inside of there, they created a separate VI and that's called you know, read write dictionary. Um, and so that way these can also run tests and it's all kind of under the parent. So you go run this and boom. You can see the test empty dictionary all passed, but read write dictionary failed. So, and I can filter that if I want, and I can show only failures. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, that would be uh, using Karaya. So kind of intro, right? You can definitely go far deeper than I've showed here, um, but it's up to you, right? If you're if you've never used unit testing in LabVIEW before or any, you know, any programming language, right? I think this is the quickest way to get up and working because it's very simple. Um, you don't really have to learn much. You kind of just drop some functions and you're off to the races and it's still effective and it's still powerful. So I think Karaya is a really, really cool tool. Um, I'm going to do some videos in the future on some of those other tools. So if you're interested in like LUnit or VI Tester um, and the NI Toolkit as well, um, I will have some videos on that. Um, but yeah, that would be kind of your intro to uh, unit testing in LabVIEW. Thanks for watching. Canon Controls is your gateway to mastering LabVIEW. Dive into programming for data acquisition, industrial communications, and manufacturing automation. Explore how to enhance your projects with cybersecurity best practices. Join the journey to elevate your skills and secure your systems with every episode.